fine, thank you. <laughs> How's New York Comic Con going for you so, so far? So far, so good. We've only been here for about 45 minutes. Okay. So it's, <laughs> it's a breeze. Yeah. It's easier than San Diego, right? I know you were busy there. So that was this year was brutal. I was I I took me ten days to recover from San Diego. I I won't do that again. Like for three shows, three days. That was too much for my little soul. <laughs> so what's the theme of the season? Um, well, I mean the the theme of the series really is survival. You know, I mean that are, your characters are put into a, a situation where you have to step up or or self destruct. You know, and we'll, we get to see the decisions people make and what they go through and how they handle themselves, not just in an immediate situation, but also globally as human beings. And so uh, what's nice about it is, you know, you get to see some people kind of blossom and some people really, really fall apart. So it's a good, it's a good human journey. Where are we in the story at this point? Sorry? Sorry, where are we in the story? Where are we meaning? Like, what have we shot? Yes. Like, what can you tell us about where, where we are in the story? Uh, well, we we globally, the world are nowhere because it hasn't aired yet. But we, the crew, are shooting episode eight of thirteen. Um, we just get into episode nine at the end of the next week, and it's right about the time when the mystery surrounding the outbreak is really kind of kicking into high gear, and where relationships are really starting to cement, and and people's loyalties and allegiances are starting to shift. So it's a good it's a good uh, crucible. Point of of the season. What do you think that fans are going to love the most about containment, or what are you hoping fans latch onto in, in the fandom? Well, I'm kind of hoping that they love everything. That would be nice. <laughs> but um, but specifically, I think the reason I love it is because it's got both that kind of crazy, oh God, what would I do if this happened to me feeling, which is so real world and it could happen at any time. So there's definitely that sense of of latent fear that runs underneath the whole thing but it's really it's a really powerful piece about people and and relationships and friendships and stuff like that which of course you know that's stuff I love to do so um, I'm hoping that people kind of come the people who love the gore will stick around and, and learn to appreciate the humanity and the people that are a little bit oogged out by the nasty stuff will kind of do a little bit of this but stay for the heart what do you think Containment will what will set it apart from like The Walking Dead or like the Twelve Monkeys type of show. I think the biggest thing that'll set it apart is it's real. You know, there's no alien conspiracy invasion. You know, there's no zombie attack coming. It's very real world. It could happen. It has happened in very small scales. You know, it's um this is just a very big big example of what how things could go wrong with mishandling of a specific virus and that sort of thing so um, I think people will love it for all the same reasons they love those other shows but it's not supernatural at all can you talk about some like the relationships and conflicts we'll see between characters yeah I mean it's uh, the whole show is sort of the architecture of it is to create conflict between characters there's the character Lex played by David Jesse who is a cop who's just trying to do the right thing and help make sure people survive but his best friend and his girlfriend are trapped inside the quarantine zone so he as he's set to uphold the no one in no one out slogan of the entire experience he's essentially keeping his loved ones trapped inside and he more than anything would love to go be with them but of course he it's, it has an obligation to the outside um, to keeping calm to keeping people orderly and to spreading the rules that will help people survive. Has filming been too, feeling like two different sets or two different groups of people if some are trapped and some are on the outside? Yeah, it's, it's funny because, you know, when we made the pilot, we all spent a lot of time together and got really close and there were a lot of friendships born. It was really lovely. And then we were saying, um, Hannah and Chris yesterday were talking and they said, oh my God, we haven't even seen Claudia since the read through of episode two because all her stuff is with David and so they never work with her and the, the way the days break out, Claudia will have like five days off and then works every scene for two straight days and so uh, there's a lot of compartmentalizing that's happened and so we were just saying we need to have like a group bonding weekends where we just, you know, go out and play together. That's all you get. I was gonna let somebody else go, but any favorite scenes that you want to tease or? 
There is, um, there's this wonderful scene from the Belgian version uh, involving a shower that we are about to shoot next week. And it's hopefully, if we do as good of a job as they did, it should be pretty seminal as far as the season. It'll be hopefully the scene that most people talk about when all is said and done. Are you hoping that containment takes the CW to a new place or gets a new audience or a new demographic? Or? Yeah, you know, the, the fantasy, of course, is that people come to the CW that have never taken a look at it before because the show is most definitely not, doesn't look like anything else on the network. It's raw and it's gritty and, you know, um, yes, the cast is still exceptionally handsome, but like, you know, but not in that, like, you know, to run, walk the runway kind of way. And, um, and so therefore it just feels more real and so that is the fantasy the reality is that probably you know five people will tune and been like hey that was pretty good <laughs> and then we'll just be proud that we made a great show but my, my hope is that it, the CW's making a lot of choices to try to open up their audience and really broaden their range and it's not even like oh we need to get more men onto the network or more women of different age it's just that they have this incredible built-in core and just because you know you're 18 to 34 or, or you know you're female doesn't mean you don't like the the dirty stuff too you know so I think what I'm excited about is to see if people who love Jane the Virgin or the Vampire Diaries also tune in and enjoy this show so we're going to see, see that like theme of family that we see with like other yeah, yeah. I mean, in this case, it's not it's not specifically um, mom, dad, son, daughter family, but it is the family bond of these people. There's a character that Hannah plays who's pregnant, and she's trapped on the inside with her mom who wants her to give up the baby, and then her boyfriend who they're ready to run away with each other before the cordon gets put up, um, is on the outside desperate to get in to be with her when the baby's born so there's a lot of stuff like that that's just really powerful and really great like seeing people what can they do when separated from their loved ones how do they act what lengths will they go to to ensure the safety of the people they care about the most and there's a lot of really good heartfelt stuff in, involved in it Chris 